How about, <clears throat> is the world fixable? I mean, one, one of the big discourses going on now, pretty obvious, is that if you look at the, the world, I mean, it's a, it's a mess. I mean, and it's not clear, we talk to lots of people, that anybody really sees, oh, oh, but if we just did this, it's going to be okay now. Everybody's kind of like in despair. There seems to be nobody in control who is, you can trust or be, is competent. Things are just running hell-bent for elect, you know, off the cliff in every direction. And there seems to be no process, no approach, no body to step into the breach and, and reorient this thing and save the, the, uh, the race. All right! I'm so happy to hear that, actually. Because every time somebody steps in to save the race, yeah. another big cycle of suffering unfolds, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, the answer I would, I, I would give is that the, the world is certainly fixable if we stop trying to fix it. Right. You know, that in other words, it's actually perfect in its unfolding, mm -hmm. uh, as you well know. And that experimenting with perspective, the highly, highly heretical point of view, that the universe is perfect exactly the way it is, thank you very much, and that it's only our habitual narratives of how the world should be, mm -hmm. for us mostly, but also as we imagine ourselves into the future and each other, uh, it's only those maps which then start to fall apart when the world is going through a period of rapid change. Well, and it is, you say, all about us. Yeah. It's really about, like Buckminster Fuller's famous quote about, you must remember that we are not nature's only experiment. And in fact, nature may be doing just fine, thank you, but people, maybe not so much. Uh, and and we've, we've had this speech before about yeah. it. We need a new dramatic change in how we operate our processor. We cannot run on this egoic consciousness the way it is right now, amped up even, and hope to have enough resources or enough food or enough shelter or anything else to go around for our species. We're just out of egoic control. Well, that's what I mean by, uh, you know, we may have uh, left the realm of the fixable, yeah. and that that's a good thing, because uh, as you're you know, pointing out is what we're all essentially operating under, this operating system that we're all deploying, is the doer. Mm -hmm. And it's precisely the doer that thinks that the world is something to be fixed by the doer. Yeah. And nothing does more damage, even we, you know, in, in everyday life, we, we don't have to think about, you know, other examples like intervention in Iraq or some other uh, political event where somebody actually tries to establish a con control mm -hmm. and an attempting to establish control actually creates more chaos, mm -hmm. right? You know, we can argue that one. But we can just look in our everyday life, like in parenting and interacting in marriage or, you know, with our friends, that it's exactly the moment where we feel like we're going to do something to get in there and fix it, that the trauma happens, the damage happens, the sadness, the unnecessary suffering occurs. Whereas if you can just be with those other people in your life and learn how to wither that part of yourself that thinks that it knows what to do, like it thinks it knows what's best for the world, mm -hmm. then you actually do see less chaos. You do see less suffering. It is something close to paradise, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And that this perspective that we have on the world as being broken and chaotic, um, you know, I'm not going to say it's an illusion, mm -hmm. but it's certainly our map, right? And it's, mm -hmm. and, and it's, and it, as a map, it's, radically incomplete and it's always the situation that human beings have been in mm -hmm. that the world was about to fall to pieces from their perspective mm -hmm. right we're about to not be able to get out of africa we're about to die in the ice age we're about to die on the transatlantic slave trade we're about to not make it you know in the womb we're always about to not make it it's the sheer activity of the brain to create all this information about how we're not a not not about to make it, about to collapse, about to experience apocalypse, 
that it feels like brings out that doer even more powerfully, mm -hmm. right? You know, that somebody's got to figure out what to do. It seems to me somebody doesn't have to figure out what to do. Well, but, but getting to that place to where if you can get enough rid of the ego as much as possible, then in fact you find you do function a whole different way. I mean, before about you don't have to get something for your activity. You do your activity as it manifests for you without any kind of personal need or desire for a return. And you, your activities are much more effective, they're much more applicable, much more useful. Uh, they fit the environment at the time. Much better than if I had this little tiny processor on top here trying to come up with, I'm going to fix the world. Yeah. When, it, when in fact it has no ability to even grasp you know, six, seven things at a time, it just can't possibly get a handle on that. So it's bizarre that we actually believe we can think up how to fix the world. Well, it's funny too because, you know, sort of every kind of kid's cartoon, you know, always has the evil character be the one that thinks that, that I am going to rule the world. <laughs> you know, and then there's this point where you say, you know, really, do, do people really want to rule the world? Not knowing that, like, you know, as a pop song in the 80s put it, you know, uh, you know, everyone wants to rule the world. Like, we're not necessarily playing that cartoon character, but we're, oper we're walking around operating as if we're that cartoon mm -hmm. character. And the place where it really matters, where we just relax a little bit on our inner cartoon character self that wants to rule the world, is in human interaction, mm -hmm. right? I mean, of course it really matters that we're able to get clear we're going to be better uh, carpenters, we're going to be better artists, we're going to be better uh, physical manipulators of reality when we have clarity like that. Mm -hmm. But you can really watch how not having two doers in the room at the same time just is a kind of qualitatively better experience. And so if you can just be with other people and not try to fix them, <laughs> mm -hmm. not you know, again, it's, it's something that takes practice because it's so automatically ingrained in us in our culture. You really start to see how beautiful and kind of, you know, screwed up <laughs> human interaction is because there are seven billion little individual dramas going on, basically, and each one of them are the center of the universe. Mm -hmm creating doing activities that are at odds with other doing activities. But when you're just with another person and you see that that doer version of yourself is just that, it's just a character, uh, you watch and you actually see that person. And you don't get in there and try to fix. And something beautiful emerges as a result, even if it's just silence. Well, one of the great Self-inquiry questions is when am I? Yeah. Which, if you look at in the course of a day, you were going, about going through your day with different relationships, you will see many different personalities come up you know, for that particular situation, all of which are continuously variable. And if, if two people come, one leaves, three more come in, you can watch a different personality emerge. So there's you should be able to draw out of that the fact that this is a an ad hoc imagined program we're running. That it is a bunch of little eyes running around pretending to be one eye. But in fact, as Jim Wolf said, you have as many eyes as you have relationships. And so, if you could recognize that, you could begin to let go of this belief that I have to change the world, when in fact there's a thousand of me, or ten thousand of me, and of the other seven billion people, they all have ten thousand. And so you've got so many solvers of the problem that no problem, solution is possible. Yeah. It's the classic too many cooks, right? Too, yeah. Way too many cooks. And you imagine that the cooks are all real, but the cooks are all fake. They're only there for this one little relationship, this one, this one point in space time. And we even sort of select out our relationships, the people that we spend time with, because we like the version of the self that they bring out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so we, we can sort of see that happening. Yeah. Um, but suppose nobody you know, buys any of that. I mean, okay. it, it could be, you know, there's still an experimental protocol you can uh, practice, mm -hmm. which is just experiment with the idea, which there's, there's no money in this idea. There's money in the idea that the world is broken and it needs to be fixed. So now we'll line up the different uh, 
consultants. Yeah, the consultants and money streams and defense intellectuals and, right. you know, everybody, right. right? But if we just experiment, we say, you know, we've been trying that for quite some time. Not you know, so well. That map might be flawed, mm -hmm. right? Just, you know, I'm not trying to go out on a limb here. Just, it might be that the very idea that the world is broken is itself broken, mm -hmm. right? And that instead, you try an alternate script. You just say, I am going to, instead of, uh, you know, priming my day with a newspaper or television, Twitter, etc., which tells me just exactly how screwed up the world is, and I'm not, like, trying to say pie in the sky or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, experiment with the idea that everything is absolutely perfect as it is. Just try it for a day. Walk around for a day, experimenting, allowing yourself to see the way in which everything completely fits together in a seamless whole. Mm -hmm. And what, maybe something we don't like, like, uh, I, I don't know, you know, I, I step on a piece of trash and it sticks to my foot, right? That I don't like that. That's part of reality I want to separate myself from. I don't like that, right? Mm -hmm. Is act, allow myself to see that as actually part of a larger scheme. That it's funny, right? You know, that I'm walking around with this piece of trash on my foot. Or, you know, any kind of factor that we want to push away in our everyday life, if we experiment with accepting it, again, not with any good reason, not with hope of any reward, just do that, just accept it, then we start to see the way in which everything really is perfectly woven into each other. And it's not that there are no problems in the world, it's just that we no longer get this kind of narrative of everything is unfixable and now we must summon the fixer to come forward. Well, we've talked before about media fasts. I yeah. mean, if you want to get a good look at this one day experiment, turn off the media. I mean, don't don't go on Facebook, don't go on Twitter, don't turn on don't, don't the internet. Yeah. I mean, and you find out that in fact how much of your internal narrative intensity oh, yeah. is, is a product of today's horrible crises. If you don't have that feeding your narrative, if you can begin to wind down your narrative a little bit by some inquiry, then you find that in fact the world really is perfect, all by itself, just as it is. If you don't have the storyline running it, oh my God, there's some horrible thing happening over there in the world.